Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our AVA session on Vault Process Automation. Uh, I'll be your presenter. My name is Jonathan Creek. So just a little bit about AVA. Um, in case this is your first time attending, this is the live web-based learning every Thursday at 10 a.m. And we have uh, product experts and Autodesk representatives for different products come in every week and go over product development, manufacturing, really cool stuff uh, for you guys to learn each week. Some of the upcoming sessions are Understanding Fusion 360 on February 11th, uh, Inventor Constraints and Joints on February 18th, and uh, Skid Design on February 25th. A little bit about myself, again, Jonathan Creek. I'm a manufacturing solutions engineer for Kativ. Uh, I work with Vault customers daily, and I really enjoy expanding the capabilities uh, of Vaults and product data management with automation and integration. And this is just one of the ways that we do that uh, with Vault. So for the agenda today, we're going to talk about the underlying technology uh, of the Vault server, the job processor and jobs. This is the base for which we're going to actually do our extension or automation uh, using the job processor. So we're going to look at the job processor, the server, the different default job types that come with Vault Professional. Um, we're going to look at the extensions and what we call custom jobs and the job processor extension itself. So what is the job server? Uh, the first part, it's called the job queue. And that queue is a list of jobs that are submitted by clients such as Inventor, AutoCAD, Vault, or even AutoLoader. Uh, this queue is stored in and managed by the Vault server itself. So if you have Vault, uh, the server, job server can be enabled from your administration options. And there's some default jobs that will start processing uh, just you know, out of the box. And the processor is a separate um, machine uh, that queues the applications and processes them. Uh, so that application is installed with the Vault client. So any machine with workgroup uh, collaboration, you know, was phased out in 2013, but it'll still work with that. Or professional uh, to publish these jobs. Now we often recommend that this be a separate standalone workstation anytime you're going to start doing a lot of processing. Uh, because right now it would process on any machine that has AutoCAD or Inventor or the Vault client, um, but you can't process jobs while the Vault client is open. So it would have to be closed. To, when you check in files from Inventor and things like that, it's processing, but all other jobs need to be closed out of the Vault client. So the standalone uh, client just allows those jobs to be processed and uh, they don't interfere with your, your daily work. And those machines need to have Inventor and AutoCAD as needed because uh, that's what does the heavy lifting. So Vault will queue a job, it'll act process through the application Inventor or AutoCAD is needed. So some of the default jobs that Vault does, there's a visualization file called the DWIF, and that's you know Autodesk technology uh, for 3D PDFs. And any, anytime a user checks on a file from AutoCAD or Inventor, it creates that visualization. That's what you see inside the Vault client. Uh, if you do an update view command inside Vault, it will trigger the job processor, the job queue from the job server. Uh, Autoloader, batch processing, uploading things into the Vault uh, client, there's an option to create a visualization file on upload. Uh, the job processor, job server will do that as well. And then anytime a state change occurs, it's going to update the visualization as well. The other thing that it does is property updates. So syncing between uh, files, and uh, all across the board, any file or property update um, will be used by the job processor. So that's what it does for you kind of out of the box. When we talk about custom jobs and the, using this extension, one of the probably the most popular one is creating PDFs. So that, you know, it could be any file type though. So we're using the underlying technology that's, you know, actually doing the work is Inventor, or AutoCAD, or TrueView. So that means that any type, file type that Inventor can create, um, you can create a PDF from Inventor. You can create a stat file or a stat file. Um, you can create DWG AutoCAD files directly from Inventor Drawings. So any of those file types are able to be processed with these custom jobs. We can send email notifications, which is really cool. Um, so the default ECO inside Vault has some email notifications, but generally when you release a file, when you change the life cycle to work in, you know, from work in progress or under review to release, it's not going to send an email notification. But we can do that now. Um, 
we can do centralized printing. So roll up a bunch of files and, and, and create a PDF for it uh, and go ahead and print it out to a printer. We can generate reports. So we're leveraging things that are already existing inside Vault or in other programs, but we're automating it. And we can do it on a schedule. Um, we can do it by triggering life cycles. Um, and then we can save files to other directories. So a lot of times somebody may release something they may want to send an email, but they may also want to save it out to another directory. So we can do that. And then there's literally, you know, a lot of other things that we can do with that. The, the sky is the limit. So let's actually look at this technology. I'm going to pull up the Vault client here, and I have a DWG and a, or a Vendor DWG, and I have an IPT. And what I've set up are some custom jobs, and in a minute we'll actually look more in depth on technology. We'll look at the jobs themselves. Um, but if I say I want to release these two files, I can go to the change state. I can go to work in progress to released. And then in the background, there are things, some, some things that are processing. So the job server is being queued up. And normally the job processor runs about every 10 minutes. Um, so I've just manually forced it to go through and process right now. And depending on how many jobs you have queued here, um, it, it determines how long it really takes. Every 10 minutes it'll start processing, but obviously if you have a very large assembly that you're creating a visualization file for or something, um, it will take you know, quite a bit longer. You know, 10 minutes will start to queue and then it'll start processing from there. So what I've set it up to do is uh, when I change uh, the life cycle to work in progress to released, uh, I want some email notifications from Vault, and this is anybody doing it, anybody doing uh, releasing a file, not just myself, but anybody inside the Vault client. I also want to create some step files, and I also want to create some PDF files, but I don't want to just create them. I want to go ahead and attach them to the actual files. So let's refresh real quick. It's still processing in the background. And so it's already created the PDFs. And if I look at the DWG file for this and look at the uses for it, I'll see that it actually created an attachment automatically. So it's created this PDF and it's attached it to the DWG. It's done the same thing for the IPT, but um, you know, the, the drawing itself is a lot more beneficial. If I refresh again, we'll see that it actually also created a step file for, for just the IPT. And so the job has some filtering to say that, you know, I don't want to create step files of drawings. I just want to create a step file, you know, a, a common format that I can send to somebody else. Maybe they, you know, have a different program than Inventor and they need that step file. Or maybe it's a CNC machine that needs a step or a stat file. Um, I could automatically send it to that machine if I needed to. And then the other thing, I just got my email notifications, is that I actually have um, my email about it. And so it's telling me this is the file. It's giving me a direct link back to the Vault client. It's giving me an image of the file itself. Um, it's giving me some you know, process automation here that the file was created by admin. It was last modified admin. And all this stuff is customizable. So I can make this a detailed report of the file. Um, I can give myself status updates about a project, um, and this is the other uh, email. So some of the things that our customers are already doing with this is um, they're doing reports on checked files or files that are checked out, uh, project updates when a when a project gets assigned a drafter or designer. Um, these are all things that can be customized and created with these jobs. So let's take a moment and actually look at what, you know, what these custom jobs look like. So out of the box, we have some, you know, some default, I guess not default jobs, but they're default custom jobs. So we can do save local as sheet metal. So that's creating a DXF of something. Um, we can do a report of a release files. Um, we can do PDFs for all, everything inside of a folder. We can create the PDF as attachment, which we just showed. Uh, created an inventor drawing, and then we've actually created some kind of, you know, default ones that we get requested all the time for. So email on lifecycle, uh, S2P on lifecycle, STL on lifecycle. 
Um, and then we've got a bunch of client, you know, hundreds of client specific things. Again, you know, customers that have said, well, hey, I like that email notification job. I want to I want to take that and I want to customize it and I want to add a report to it. Um, I want to do something else with it. And so these jobs are um, editable. Their technology is called PowerShell. And PowerShell is a language that comes with, um, with Windows 7, with Windows 8. Uh, it's kind of replaced the batch or command scripting uh, languages. And you don't need to be a programmer. We mentioned this in our email notifications or our, our communications with you. You don't need to be a programmer to actually make these. Uh, so there's a, a foundation that's been created, a framework that's been created on top of Vault that's already been written, and it ties into the API or the programming language for Vault. So it's very easy to go in and tap into those things and things like life cycles, uh, property changes, updating properties, Whatever really is available to you inside Vault could be used and put on one side of one of these jobs. And again, you don't need to know how to make, you can always program a, a PowerShell job from scratch if you are a programmer and you know how to do that, um, which is pretty easy. Uh, I've been a programmer for 17 years, so I, I'm very familiar with, with you know, using these type of, uh, of, of PowerShell jobs and things. But um, for the average user, you could just tap into the API. So let's look at one of these um, let's look at one of these jobs real quick. So we're making a vault connection. So it's a very short code. The, the actual code for this is probably, you know, maybe 50 lines of code, but it's a shortcutted language. Um, it gives you all the commands that you would necessarily need. So if you need to tap into a file object, you can do that without having to write the code itself. And then you're just kind of do, determining what you actually want to do with it. So there's a save file as, we're, you know, we're saving a PDF. So this is the, the automation of it's taking it outside of Vault. It's using Inventor to save it as a PDF or something or another file type. It's putting it back inside Vault, maybe attaching it. Um, it's very simple, you know, to, to extend or modify these um, as, you, as needed. So just a recap of what we've kind of went over. Um, the job server is a technology that comes with the Vault, right? It's on the Vault server when you install it. The job processor can be any machine. Um, we recommend a standalone machine. There's some default job types that come with that. Uh, and then there's an extension, um, which is a paid extension, to be able to create custom jobs. Um, if you're interested in that extension, you can call us, call, contact us, email us. My email address is right here, and you can call this number. We'd love to talk to you about uh, your automation projects, what you're trying to do, getting custom reports, getting custom email notifications, maybe just processing some files automatically, and taking advantage of this extension. The other ways you can reach out to us are on the blog, our YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of these channels. Uh, you'll be able to find um, us, and uh, we'd be glad to answer your questions there. All right, guys, thank you for attending. Uh, we'll catch you next week uh, for Understanding Fusion 360. Thank you.